Greetings all. This is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series, video 4A. Uh, this is kinematics of circular motion. Now until now, uh, the objects that we've looked at uh, have moved in either uh, straight line paths in one or two dimensional space or uh, parabolic paths in the case of uh, projectiles. Uh, now we're going to look at objects that move in circular paths. Um, it's important to acknowledge uh, the difference between an object that is moving in a circle or revolving around something else uh, and an object that is spinning. So uh, we're not going to be looking at rotation just now. Uh, that will come later in the course. So for now we're looking at objects that move in circular paths. Um, if we consider the Earth's uh, motions. Uh, the rotation of the Earth or the spinning of the Earth is associated with uh, day and night. The Earth rotates once per day. Um, again, for, for now we're not going to be looking at this motion. Uh, the revolution of the Earth around the Sun uh, takes a full year and this is associated with um, seasonal variation and uh, this is the motion that we're considering now. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the principles that we look at here will apply to objects that move in circular or semicircular paths. Uh, by semicircular, we mean uh, a part of a circle. So we could be looking at uh, just a half of an orbit or a quarter of a circle. Um, as long as that piece of the path is circular, all of these principles will still apply. Now, we describe the curvature of the path uh, by using the radius of the circle. This is typically given the symbol R. That R could be uppercase or lowercase. Uh, this is one, one example where uh, there is no case sensitivity. Um, you will recall the circumference of a circle. Uh, C is 2 pi times R. When the radius of the circle has uh, units of distance, which it typically will. Uh, the circumference of the circle defines the distance traveled by the object in one revolution or one time around the path. Uh, this is going to have particular significance when we look at uh, the kinematics of circular motion. So the object in one revolution or one time around traverses a distance equal to the circumference of the circle. So 2 pi r. Now uh, we're going to make a major assumption uh, when we look at circular motion uh, and that is the magnitude of the velocity or in other words its speed uh, will remain constant. The object is not going to get faster or slower as it moves through its circular path. Uh, we call this uniform circular motion. Obviously the uniform refers to the speed or the magnitude of the velocity. Um, we're also going to introduce a new quantity that's called the period. The period uh, is the time that it takes for the object to move once through the circular path um, or the time for one revolution. It's also called orbital period as we'll see later. Uh, it's given the symbol capital T. Uh, this one case does matter. Uh, lowercase t is generic time. Uh, the period t is capital T and this of course refers to the time it takes to go around once. <clears throat> now when we look at the kinematics of circular motion, typically uh, we're going to place an origin, the origin of the xy plane, right on the center of the circular path. Um, the radius of the path is not on this picture for clarity. Uh, when we look at this object that's moving in its circular path, uh, we need to look at its position, uh, its velocity, and its acceleration uh, at any point in that path. Uh, and we need to refer to those quantities in uh, standard vector notation magnitude at some mathematical angle. Now when we look at the, the origin of the xy plane on the center of the path, uh, we can be certain that at any time the distance of the object from the origin is equal to the radius of the path. So you can see because of 
because the origin is here in the middle wherever it is in the path okay the magnitude of the position vector is just going to be the radius of the path so wherever it is it comes down to the 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 direction its magnitude is always going to be the radius of the path because of where we place the origin <clears throat> now the direction of the position at any time is determined by uh, where the object is at t equals zero and how much of one period it has traversed around the circular path so the ratio of the given time or the time that you're asked about the ratio of this given time to the period is equal to the ratio of the mathematical direction to 360 degrees the 360 degrees of course is one revolution so the ratio we see here is the time period we're asked about and its ratio to one period or, or the time for one revolution equals the mathematical angle over 360 <clears throat> Now, if the given time is greater than the period, we're going to divide by the period, and then we're going to subtract the integer from the result. The integer indicates the number of times the object has already gone around the path and returned to its starting point. We need the decimal, which is, indicates uh, how much of the current revolution has been traversed in, in, at, at the time period we're asked about. If the given time is less than the period, the fraction little t over period can be used as calculated. We'll see both examples in a moment. So for example, uh, we'll say that the object is at 0 degrees or on the positive x-axis at t equals 0. We're also going to say that the radius of the path is uh, 5 meters and the period of its motion is 3 seconds. Now if we wanted to know where the object is at 1.72 seconds we set up the ratio as shown uh, we would see 1.72 over 3 the seconds go away um, and we find that the mathematical angle is 206.4 degrees now again we know the magnitude of the position already the magnitude has to be the radius of the path and then the angle the mathematical angle is determined by the ratio that we've set up here now if we have the same situation but we want to know where it is at 14.8 seconds again we set up the ratio 14.8 divided by 3 we get this for our result now again this 4 doesn't really matter because the 4 indicates that the object has gone completely around the path four times all we care about is the 0.933 because this shows how much of one revolution it has traversed in this current cycle. So we subtract the 4, use the decimal, and then solve for the mathematical angle this way, we'd see that it's 336 degrees. Okay, now in these examples, the object is moving counterclockwise. In other words, it's moving with our mathematical axes. If it were to be moving clockwise or the other way around, we would take our result when we get to the end and subtract from 360. Now as far as the velocity goes, um, again we're going to need to describe the velocity uh, in terms of a magnitude and a direction at any particular time. Uh, we've made a major assumption about the, the motion and that is the magnitude of the velocity is constant. Again we're dealing with uniform circular motion so we can make that assumption. Uh, we can find the magnitude of the velocity by considering the distance traveled in one revolution, which is the circumference, and the time it takes to do so. That's the period. So our velocity, our formula for the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity is 2 pi r over t. Again, that's at any time. All right. Now the direction of the velocity is constantly changing. So conceptually, the instantaneous velocity at any time, at any point in the path, is tangent to the circular path. So you can see the two examples I've given here. Again, it's moving counterclockwise at point A. The instantaneous velocity at that instant is tangent to the circle, as you see here. 
tangent to the path by definition is at right angles to the radius at that point. Now the radius of course is our position vector. So all we really need to do in counterclockwise motion is add 90 to the direction of the position vector. So again this is my position vector we know this is the um, the, the mathematical angle of the position vector if we then add 90 to it that gives me the direction of the velocity. Now in the event that this object were moving clockwise this way then tangent to the path would be in this direction and we would subtract 90 instead of adding it. Okay so again you have um, this beta sub a indicates the mathematical direction of the position at any particular point. Notice that the magnitude is always the same. The only time this presents a problem is when the object happens to be in quadrant 4 if it's moving counterclockwise or quadrant 1 if it's moving clockwise. Uh, in the first case if it's in quadrant 4 if it's down here we would add 90 to the position vector and then subtract 360 so that um, our result is between 0 and 360. Um, in the event that uh, we happen to be in quadrant 1 moving clockwise we would find that when we subtract um, when we subtract 90 from the position vector it gives us a negative number uh, we would then add 360 to that. Now before we look at the acceleration you may you may think that it's odd that we're even discussing acceleration because we've already said that the magnitude of the velocity or the speed in the circular path is constant. Uh, you're probably under the impression that this means that the object is not accelerating. Uh, however the definition of acceleration if you remember is the change in velocity divided by time. Uh, in the case of uniform circular motion even though the magnitude of the velocity is not changing the direction is changing all the time. And when the direction changes you're, you're officially changing the velocity. So there is a change in the velocity even though the speed doesn't change the direction does. Okay, So that means that you must have an acceleration. We call this acceleration centripetal Okay, the, centri the word centripetal um, means towards the center. So the centripetal acceleration always points towards the center of the circular path. Um, again, no matter where it is in the, in the path, the acceleration always points towards the center. Uh, the magnitude of it is also constant, just like the velocity. Um, what we, would, we call this acceleration A sub C. Uh, it's equal to V squared over R. This, of course, refers to the magnitude of the velocity. Uh, if we put 2 pi r over t in for v, we get another expression, a sub c, uh, 4 pi squared r over t squared. Uh, these are equivalent. Uh, you can use uh, whichever one you like. Now, again, the centripetal acceleration always points towards the center of the path. So when we look at position a here, we already know that the position vector points out from the origin towards point A, point in this direction. And the A sub C, or the centripetal acceleration, points towards the center of the path, which is effectively the opposite direction from that of the position. So again, if, you know, if as long as we know where the object is in the circular path, all we have to do is add or subtract 180 from the position vector at that point because that indicates the opposite direction. Okay. Uh, we want the result to be between 0 and 360 so if the object happens to be in quadrants 1 or 2 we add 180. Uh, if it happens to be in th quadrants 3 or 4 we then subtract 180. Again the result needs to be between 0 and 360. So we have a sort of a general formula for centripetal acceleration, v squared over r at the direction for the position plus or minus 180. Alright, so here's a standard type uh,
kinematics problem. Uh, we've got an object in a counterclockwise circular horizontal path. We're looking at it from above. Um, we have the radius of the path, 37 meters, and the period is 7.04 seconds. We're asked about the position, velocity, and acceleration, all three, at t equals 51.39 seconds. So again, the key is figuring out where it is at that time. Once we have the position, we just have to execute the formulas. So we're going to set up our ratio. We see that the given time, the time we're asked about is 51.39. Clearly, that's more than the period. So when we divide, we get 7.2997. Again, the 7 doesn't matter. So we subtract it. We use the decimal. And we solve for the mathematical direction of the position. We see that it's 108. OK, now, once we have the position, again, for velocity, the direction for the velocity, um, we add 90. For the direction for the centripetal acceleration, uh, we're in quadrant 2, so we would add 180. Uh, in terms of the magnitudes, 2 pi r over t and v squared over r. It's pretty straightforward. And these are our results here. OK? <clears throat> So that'll do it for circular kinematics. Next up is Newton's laws. Until then, enjoy, and I'll see you soon.